Hello, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I'm excited to be interviewing Andreas Lumpf, who is the creator and lead developer of the NIM programming language. NIM's tagline is Efficient, Expressive, Elegant, and it is a statically typed systems programming language. It generates native dependency-free executables and has a tradition of garbage collection that's moving into an interesting form of reference counting that we'll talk about during the interview. It's designed to be an efficient, again, uh, systems programming language, but it also compiles to JavaScript as well as uh, to native executables, which makes it able to reach more platforms. I'm going to look at a more elaborate version of this uh, example program here. Uh, I have a type, which is a person that contains a name and an age. And my main procedure here creates a sequence, which is a resizable array of persons. I'm calling show prices to get the presumed ticket price on each person. And note here that in my embedded formatting string, I can call a function, which is ticket price, that provides any of these values. Notice an implicit return statement here in the functional style. Uh, and notice that functions which have no side effects are separated from procedures. If I compile this through C, notice I have here an executable that's only 59K. And if I run it through valgrind, there's one alloc and one free here in this example. And notice also that I can compile it to JavaScript as well using JS instead. And then I can run node on my generated JS and it works just the same. Uh, normally the C file they compile through is over in a separate cache directory so you don't have to think about it. I copied it here so I can take a look at what it looks like. Notice that its goal is to generate a code for the machine consumption and not necessarily for human consumption, though it might be worthwhile sometimes to look at this for interpreting what's going on in your program. Of course, you need the JS to run inside of JS, and here's the example of what that looks like as well. Now let's get into the interview, which is asynchronous. I sent Andreas my questions and he sent me his answers. I also added the screen capture. Let's get started. First of all, a question I like to ask, how do you pronounce your name and how should I pronounce it in American English? Andreas Rumpf. So yeah, that's my name. I'm Andreas Rumpf, the lead developer and original inventor of the name programming language. And if you have trouble pronouncing my name, just try your best and I'm sure it will be fine. Congratulations on reaching NIM 1.0 last year. How has the post 1.0 plan of spec first development been going? In a nutshell, it works much better than before. Making people write a spec or some rough document about what should be accomplished uh, helps to, to iterate over the design and to detect edge cases sooner. And afterwards, this process is documented and you can read the, the, about the history of a feature and you can understand the reasoning behind the design, behind the design of a particular feature and also to read about what alternatives we explored and looked at before deciding on this particular design. So, and it, it really, from speaking from experience, it does improve the quality of the result, of the outcome. What was your original motivation for NIM? Has your vision for it changed since then? And if so, how? I was studying programming languages and I noticed a hole or a gap in the programming language landscape. Missing was a systems programming language that combined the best parts of Python, Ada and Lisp. So I wanted it to have um, Python's readable and concise syntax, Ada's strong static type system to prevent bugs at compile time and Lisp's flexible macro system. Um, especially I noticed that uh, Lisp's macro system is a perfect fit for a systems programming language as it allows us to move computation from runtime to compile time. And yes, this language is NIM. This was my original vision of NIM. It's still my vision and this vision only changed in so far that now I figured out a way to make the full NIM language uh, available for domains where you need or well, where you have uh, hard real-time constraints or to, to make it work on embedded tiny devices. So that's what we are working on. So this, there is a new way of doing memory management for NIM called ARC inspired by Rust and Swift and C++ 
which is an optimized way to do reference counting. Um, and we have some result, like we have an implementation, it's progressing rapidly, and we know that it improves uh, throughput, latency, and memory consumption at the same time. So that's quite an achievement, and probably calling it optimized reference counting doesn't do it justice. justice. Um, and so it should, it's, it's really a, a, a new algorithm to do memory management. NIMS homepage describes it as a systems language. Is this compatible with garbage collection? How do plans for deterministic memory management affect this? Good question. As ideally, uh, we would have hardware support for garbage collection, and then it would be a contradiction not to offer a garbage collector for NIM. As a systems programming, it should uh, like it should support what the hardware offers uh, effectively. However, such support is still not uh, available, and so they must work on the existing hardware and on the, on the embedded devices. And as I said, this is where our focus of development is. So. Uh, ideally, the, the old garbage collection algorithms that NIM uses based on tracing uh, should be a thing of the past. Do you see NIM as appealing more to current programmers of Python, JavaScript, C, or C++? If you had to rank these as target markets, what order would you give? We know from surveys that most NIM users come from Python and JavaScript, uh, most likely because traditional um, desktop applications moved over to web applications and so you can use Python for the backend and uh, write the browser-based front-end in, in JavaScript. Um, so the order that I have in mind is Python before JavaScript before C++ before C. Why compile them to C or C++ instead of using LLVM? For the simple reason that LLVM wasn't ready when I started NIM. I mean, it wasn't ready as a general purpose compiler backend. And it still doesn't target as many different CPU architectures that I would like. Um, GCC has more um, support for ex exotic hardware, let's say. So right now it's, it's a benefit for us to compile to C. There is, however, a project called NLVM, which combines the NIM compiler front end with the LLVM back end so to to um, so without this uh, C intermediate step and I expect this solution to win in the long run because that's what we have seen happening with C++ so C++ was originally compiled to C uh, but eventually all the compilers got like got it got native backends and now nobody really compiles C++ to C code anymore. So I expect the same to happen to NIM. NIM is mostly K slash underscore insensitive. How does this work out in practice? It's never been an issue for anybody who actually used the language for a, for a month, let's say. It's however welcome excuse not to look into NIM into too much detail to see what it offers. Um, for version 1, we actually added a compiler switch called style check error or warning so that the compiler does warn about when you use your identifiers uh, inconsistently, but it never found a, a real bug in my experience because NIM has a static type system to, to detect bugs. Um, so this was purely done to mitigate the fears of newcomers. Um, we do look into um, preventing even more bugs at compile time via static analysis um, and abstract interpretation, but these mechanisms do not care about how you wrote your identifiers. So it's uh, for the for the compiler, it's an, an irrelevant syntactic aspect. Um, but I also heard from people using it that it, the feature actually does work out as we as we designed it to, like, and, and that is they can write the NIM code in the style they prefer and yet import libraries written in a different style and it all uh, works together really well. 
Indentation-based syntax is sometimes polarizing. Do you feel that it has been right for NIM? Seeing as Python is rising to become one of the most widespread programming languages, I do not regret my decision to base NIM on an indentation-based syntax. Objectively, it produces shorter code, and I also do not agree with the common conflation of verbosity and readability. Um, Ada is a very verbose language, but its readability is actually harmed by this, in my opinion. So there's, there's the, th and the, the reason for that is that good code, good readable code, focuses on the essential aspects and the long list of, say, curly brackets that are closed is not uh, really relevant code. Like All it means is that you manage to close all your scopes uh, effectively. Well, congr congratulations on that. But this is not, not important semantic information, and so the code is better off without it. NIM has a powerful macro system based on a consistent syntax. How do I choose between functions and macros when writing NIM? The very first versions of the NIM manual actually covered this question. So NIM follows the principle of least surprise, uh, where you should use the, the least expressive language construct that does the job for you. So you should start with the function and then maybe if you need global state it becomes a proc and then maybe you need some uh, control flow abstraction, like you need to uh, say return early for in, in your error handler or something, which can then be put inside a template. And only as a last resort, you should write uh, your own macro and or, or even a domain specific language. That said, the uh, NIM does work well without using macros or actually without writing macros. Um, so um, writing macros is much harder than using macros. If you just end up using the macros that we provided for you in our standard library, you can become a very productive uh, NIM programmer. Does NIM metaprogramming work well with editor and IDE tooling? Uh, NIM support for IDE as and tooling is very good um, for the reason that we based our tooling on the NIM compiler front end itself. So it's the, 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 com the, the tooling does understand NIM's macros and templates. And there, is, there are few reasons why a macro system should cause trouble for IDE tooling. But let's assume that it does, then we can add uh, special annotations to the macro system helping out the tooling. For example, say you have a macro that gives you the uh, way to do uh, advanced pattern matching for NIM called match and it looks like uh, a bit like NIM's built-in case statement then the idea is that you can annotate this match macro to say it's like a case statement to help out the tooling um, how to, to understand it what happens when you typed in the match word in, into your uh, editor. So um, this will work out. How important is compiler speed to you? Compile speed is very important to me. I used uh, Delphi in the 90s and it compiled faster than anything else I've ever used afterwards. So currently the NIM compiler compiles 21,000 lines of code per second on a single core CPU, which is quite okay. Um, we know how to make it faster. Um, the thing with Delphi is that it's actually quite easy to compile quickly because it's a very inexpressive, say, let's say, language which lacks many advanced features. NIM, however, does have a complex macro system and a generic system and you need to instantiate these things. So uh, it's a harder problem for NIM to solve, but we know exactly how to solve it and so it's only a matter of time until we, we will see uh, significant uh, improvements on this front. NIM has a number of financial supporters, but does it have or does it need the support of an industry heavyweight to bring it to the mainstream? Does it need a killer app? I am convinced that NIM will win because we have the best language design out there. To help us win faster, more money is always welcome. 
I'm sure you will find links uh, in the description of the video to um, uh, explaining to you how to donate money to us. Um, and there are contributors that uh, do de are developing what I consider to be NEMS killer app. Um, but there are other contributors also thinking that they will develop NIMS killer app. So in order to not to offend anybody here, I simply won't go into more details. What's your favorite NIMS success story? Objectively, the biggest success story for NIM has been Status' decision to write their Ethereum blockchain client called Nimbus in NIM because since then we have been able to work on them full time and the progress has been rapid and steady. Um, so yeah, that's the biggest success story. There are other success stories, uh, but this one is was most important for NIMS development. Any final words? Thank you for asking me these questions. It was a pleasure to answer them. Um, NIM is growing rapidly and we have plenty of exciting developments in the pipeline so be sure that you watch its progress carefully and maybe we can repeat this interview in a couple of years to see how my predictions worked out. Bye bye! And I agree that might be fun. Big thanks to Andreas for the interview and I hope you all enjoyed it also. Bye y'all!